Hey everyone, my name is Ben Chaish. I'm a wedding and elopement photographer based in the Pacific Northwest. And today we are looking at a budget Noctilux. The Seven Artisan 75mm f1.25. On paper, this has the same specs as Leica's $14,000 version. How well does it stack up? Following in sort of the footsteps of my other Seven Artisan and TT Artisan lens review videos, I've always had kind of a, a love-hate with the telephoto length on the Leica M system. I'm kind of a sucker for shallow depth of field and bokeh, and so because of that, uh, in my years with the Canon system, I shot a lot with the 85 1.2L version 2. That lens just has just absurd shallow depth of field, and I would do a lot of bokeh panoramas where I'd stitch together three to six photos together and just get un- worldly, uh, ungodly amounts of uh, bokeh and depth of field out of it. And so kind of one of the things that I knew I was going to be not necessarily losing out on, but just getting something different um, than one of the things that was kind of one of my mainstays was going to be that telephoto look on the Leica M system. So when I first got an M9 and an M2, I picked up this 90 millimeter Sumicron. Um, it's an E55 version. I believe it's probably from the 80s. I'm not exactly sure, but the rendering is really good and the sharpness is totally acceptable. And, you know, it's a pretty good size. Like, it's not a bad size by any means. Uh, it fits well. It's really easy to take around. And the problem was that just focusing this lens wide open at f2 through the rangefinder was really, really difficult. Um, and from what I've heard from a lot of people, some of the more vintage lenses were a little bit less calibrated, let's say, for the digital sensors. So I've never had any issues shooting this on my M2 or my M6. But on digital, I found that it just back focuses a little bit. And so for a while, I was just kind of like focus, shift, focus, shift on my own, trying to kind of gauge that, but being precise at 90 millimeters at f2 was a little too hard. So I got the original Visiflex for the M240 system and then started actually just adapting this onto the EOS R, which is the camera that's filming me right now because the EVF is good enough. It has focus peaking, all that kind of stuff. And then it allowed me to still carry two um, Leica M bodies. And then I would just toss that on for speeches and ceremonies and stuff like that at weddings. But that being said, there was a couple things that it was lacking. It basically, I just really wanted a lens that I could use solely on the M without needing to use either a Visiflex or the Canon EOS R or some other mirrorless camera. Um, and then I still wanted that really, really shallow depth of field. And I don't have $14,000 plus tax. So it would be like fifteen and a half thousand dollars uh, to buy a 75 millimeter Noctilux. So when I saw that Seven Artisan, whose lenses, some of them have been really great, as you've seen in some of these videos, some of them have been so-so and some of them have been fantastic. So they made a 75 millimeter F1.25 that is actually smaller than the 75 Noctilux, but about the size of the 50 Noctilux. Um, and it's pretty huge, but they made it and the cost is only $449. I say only because in the Leica world, $449 in comparison to $14,000 is obviously going to be uh, a more manageable jump. So I thought, what the heck for 450 bucks, like, let's try this thing out. Um, so this is the lens that I bought with my own money because I was actually intrigued by it. So there is no disclaimer to be had here. This video is not sponsored in any way, but it was a intriguing enough option for me that I decided to purchase it. And I figured I would make a video out of it. So when I got this lens, just like any other TT artisan or seven artisan lens, it needs to be calibrated and calibrating a lens at F 1.25 on a rangefinder is pretty difficult. 
Um, so I've probably tried calibrating this four times or so. Um, it wasn't the easiest thing to get down. And the main reason behind that is that Let's just cut to the chase. This thing is not sharp at 1.25. Not by any means. It gives a very dreamy look. Uh, some would say it's called that like a glow. I would say that it's just really soft and basically looks like uh, a Jedi Force ghost because it's just hazy and there's chromatic aberration, all sorts of stuff. Um, but when stopped down to maybe F2, it kind of starts picking up uh, at 2.8. I would say this is totally usable. I've, I've taken some portraits and stuff like that on this at 2.8 and it's, it's great. The other thing I'll say about the Boca, because it is pretty good and pretty interesting. Uh, I, I do wish, man, if the, if the center was just sharper, that would just make this lens so much better. It has, I think 13 aperture blades, something like that. So the fact that, if I would keep this lens and shoot it a lot, I would probably be shooting it stop down as much as I could. So F2 or F2.8. F2 is like manageable. 2.8 is sharp enough for sure for me, at least my tastes. The bokeh and the out of focus elements at lower apertures or higher apertures, I guess, is totally usable and really, really kind of pleasing because the aperture blades make it such a circular aperture that you don't get those kind of like bulky, weird uh, bokeh shapes. So even stopping down to like F2.8 or whatever, you're still getting really quality, in my opinion, bokeh out of this because of just that aperture um, ring and aperture blades in the middle. But that being said, are you going to want to buy a lens that's this big and this heavy to photograph with it at 2.8? No, you're going to want to shoot it at 1.25 or 1.4 at the least. There are other options that you can get that are much smaller, albeit more expensive, that you can photograph things at f2, 1.8. Um, so, you know, it's kind of just an interesting lens in what I would consider my usage of this. So because of the lack of sharpness at f1.25 and just the fact that, like, carrying this... <laughs> I mean, look at that. It just, it falls straight down. You might as well just like put it down. Uh, I think this, this lens weighs over 600 grams, which doesn't sound like a lot, but on a small body like this, I don't even know what an M10 weighs, but it, it is just so stinking front heavy that you kind of just, it's one of those things you hold by the lens. All right. Future Benj here. I recorded this video originally in December and then actually had a wedding in late January where I used this lens specifically on this wedding and wasn't really expecting to use it much, but then as I was kind of using it in real life, um, in actuality, this lens, yes, is lacking greatly in contrast and generally lacking in sharpness, but I just shot a bunch of images at 1.25 on this lens and after, you know, doing a little bit of work to the photos uh, for sharpening and uh, added contrast and specifically using the dehaze tool, it has a really good look to it. Um, the, the foreground stuff doesn't look as bad. The chromatic aberration wasn't as bad. The hazing and all that kind of stuff wasn't as bad either. So as kind of an auxiliary tool, you know, I, I do wish there was some sort of middle ground and if... Um, Seven Artisans is listening for some reason. If they could somehow make a lens that cost double this, that was maybe a thousand dollars and was, you know, just an improvement, a version two of this lens would be fantastic. But as it sits right now, you know, it actually works pretty well. And I definitely could consider using this as kind of an auxiliary piece when needed. Again, I wouldn't use this as my primary lens because it just doesn't have that reliability, but as kind of a creative tool, it worked really, really well. So definitely was usable in a professional setting, but obviously you get a little bit more of a unique and um, distinct look out of it for sure. But would it work in a pinch? Um, and do you get images that are interesting enough to be worthwhile at 1.25? 
I think so. Uh, I think it's one of those lenses that, you know, you're comparing, if you're comparing it to a $14,000 Leica lens, like there's just no way in the world it's going to get in e- even the realm of competing. Uh, it also doesn't compete in sharpness to the 90 Summa Cron at F2, but this lens also came out in the 80s and is significantly more expensive. The The used value in this is in like the 1000 to $1,500 range from what I've seen. So it's not even really apples to apples. They're different focal lengths altogether. So this was kind of my comparison. I'm trying to figure out what lens I'm keeping. I will say that photographing this on the EOS R is great. I would feel like it's it would be a fun lens for people, especially at the money for a low light kind of monster. The bokeh is pretty good. I would say that the bokeh in the foreground, uh, especially as I was kind of photographing some stuff in the snow the other day on the EOS R, the foreground bokeh has some really weird characteristics and properties to it that I didn't exactly uh, enjoy. Again, for 450 bucks, do I think this lens is worth it for a fun lens that's a little bit different? Yeah, totally. I would say, unless you have a digital Leica, though, I probably wouldn't recommend this for film photographers unless you have a way of calibrating it, uh, again, on like a film Leica or something like that. But I would say on like a Sony or the Canon or whatever, it's a good enough performer. Um, and if you stop it down, it works well. And if you kind of, it's one of those things where I probably wouldn't purposely shoot it a lot at F at below F2, unless I wanted that look and was fine with that kind of dreamy characteristic. But uh, on a body that's not an M, this does balance really well. It's a totally fine and usable lens uh, on another mirrorless body with like a grip. So if you had like a, a Leica SL or again, most other mirrorless bodies, it, I feel like it fits really well. And again, for 450 bucks, I feel like that's just always the caveat for 450 bucks for kind of the realm of most of these seven artists and TT artists and lenses for the money, they're usually worth it. You're just not, if you're looking to get a replacement at 95% to a Leica lens, you, in most cases, you're probably not going to get there. That's the case with this lens, at least for me. Uh, I find that it is kind of fun at 1.25, really dreamy. Um, that separation is definitely there. But is it like a great lens at 1.25? No, not really. But is it fun to have that as an option? Sure. So thanks so much for watching. Hopefully this was helpful. Uh, I feel like this is the kind of stuff that I try to look up and figure out, like, is this for me? So that is kind of the reason I'm doing this review uh, and a lot of these reviews that I'm doing. It's a super fun lens. I'm still trying to figure out, in all honesty, if I'm going to keep it, if I'm going to sell it. Uh, I'm considering just sending my 90 Sumicron to get calibrated at Leica to an M10 body. Maybe that'll be worth it, uh, but then again, I'm over a thousand dollars more at that point after the calibration into this lens than into this one. So, for a limited use case, is it worth it? I don't know. Still trying to figure that out. So, thanks so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions below, and if you are into this, if you're into Leicas and everything like that, I'm posting lots of videos, lots of content lately, and we'll be continuing to do a lot more into the next year. So thanks again, and I will see you on the next one.